the portion of the letter I'm going to read is from Samuel Pierce to his wife Sarah, written in uh, London, uh, from London in uh, September of 1795. When William Carey went to India, Pierce was on the committee that sent him there as part of the Baptist Missionary Society. And Pierce became a key fundraiser and so was often frequently away from home. And so this is a letter that he writes uh, to her uh, after having been away for a number of weeks. Every day improves not only my tenderness but my esteem for you. Called as I now am to mingle much with society in all its orders, I have daily opportunity of making remarks on human temper. And after all I have seen and thought, my judgment as well as my affection still approves of you as the best of women for me. We have been too long united by conjugal ties to omit a suspicion of flattery in our correspondence or conversation. I begin to count the days which I hope will bring me to re-enjoyment of your dear company. And uh, here's a man who's been away from home. Travel in those days was more, obviously a lot more difficult than it is today. Communication was more difficult. Uh, you couldn't simply pick up the phone. And uh, here's a letter he's have to, have to write. He could hope that she could get it in a, uh, maybe two, maybe three days. And um, he's eager, obviously, to see her again. But he also is, is reminding her of the fact that uh, his love for her is on, on diminished, despite the fact that he's been moving in company that might expose him to temptation and uh, reminds of, of, of the depth of his love for her. A uh, second letter, which is one of my favorites, is when he's uh, on a six-week preaching tour in Dublin. He had been invited in 1796 to go over to Dublin as part of an evangelical attempt to reach uh, on uh, evangelized parts of the island in terms of uh, Roman Catholics. And uh, he has this fabulous letter he writes back to her in this way. For my part, I compare our present correspondence to a kind of courtship, rendered sweeter than what usually bears that name by a certainty of success and a knowledge of the suitableness of my dear intended. Not less than when I sought your hand, so I now covet your heart. Nor doth the security of possessing you at all lessen any pleasure at the prospect of calling you my own when we meet again the other side of St. George's Channel. O oh, our dear fireside, when shall we sit down toe to toe and tete a tete again? Not a long time, I hope, will elapse ere I re-enjoy that felicity. I've read this in other contexts, and I will usually begin by reminding people that actually people did speak this way. It, uh, it's not stilted in his day. And uh, what he is doing here is, again, he's uh, indicating something of his love for her, but uh, reminding her of the depth of his, of his commitment to her and, and uh, saying that uh, his pursuit of her pr prior to their marriage really has not ended that he still is, is seeking to, to show her his love for her. And uh, he can't wait until he gets back to the other side of what is the Irish Sea or St. George's Channel when he can sit down with her toe-to-toe -to -toe and tete-a-tete. -to -tete.